displace yourself, take yourself away from the routine of everyday stuff. No, just putting the washing on, just writing the to-do list so you've got more to-dos to do, just putting the tea on so you feel prepared later on. If you've got that one thing to learn, like the book to read, the painting to start, give it conscious time and attention, and the best way to do that is just take yourself away. Number two, number two, number two, number two, commit to a learning pattern. So when I enrolled at Norfolk Painting School, I would take myself to Norfolk once a month for three days. And that way I was able to get the best out of the opportunity, the best out of the learning, the best out of the experience too. We were young and we were free and running, never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling. We were young and drunk in love. Number three, number three, number three. Step into being scared. And I started at the Norfolk School. I remember the first day I stood up to the easel. I was literally shaking with fear being judged, not being good enough, have I made the right decision? But that fear disappeared the moment I put the paint on the canvas. A few years later I have started thinking If it's just love in every glass I'm drinking We're like one and without you I'm sinking I'm always shining next to you Oh, I got you, there's no reason practice being watched. It's a wee bit like public speaking when you're painting in front of other people. It happens at Norfolk School, we were very often set one easel up at front and people around would watch everybody. Well while you're there in front of people and you've got a wee audience watching your every brush stroke, you've just got to commit to it. And you know what, when you commit to it, you get different results. It builds the confidence muscle and it takes the introvert out for a little while. Number five, if you're listening to something, words of wisdom, on an audiobook, in a lesson, in a classroom, from a friend, from a mentor, write it down. I very often go to conferences and they say, don't worry about writing, we'll send you the PowerPoint slides. Well, I'm probably never going to open that PowerPoint slide. Ever. and reading a PowerPoint slide on a computer does not have the same physiological effect on my learning as if I'm writing. There's something wonderful that happens that when I'm actually writing it travels from the paper, through the pen, through my hand, all the way up to my brain and it anchors it there. I have always been afraid of changes But you show me life is full of faces Sometimes clouds got in our favorite places, but we were young and unaware. Number six, experiment with tools. When I started oil painting school, I started with the finest of brushes. In fact, let me show you. The smaller the brush, the smaller my physical movements are on the canvas. And here I was expecting to paint movement, to paint an emotion, to paint a feeling with a tiny brush, with tiny movements. Thanks to the school, I now paint with wind, what they call Windscreen? Windscreen scrapers. Anything I can find in the kitchen, clay shapers. If there is a brush, it's probably a four inch flat head brush. Let me think about the form and the shape of what I'm trying to create. So suddenly, the canvas has got more energy. And it's got more energy because I've put more energy into it. I've gone from little tiny movements to huge movements. So play with your tools. <laughs> Number seven, invest in your team. There's probably people around who are trying to learn the same thing as you. Diploma 5, we get on really well. And individually, everybody's got a skill that they contribute to the team. 
So if somebody's stuck, you know who to go to. Everybody's got a different talent and a different bank of experience to bring to that group. You can achieve really good things on your own, but together you can achieve even more. You can just nudge each other in the right direction. And I'm always grateful for those nudges.